Hi, I'm Sebastian. This is my 87 MR2 AW11. Started off in a paddock, been sitting for 15 years and sort of picked it up for reasonable money. And um, previously, the old man's converted the Celica to electric. So basically, decided to do this car. So, come have a look. It basically retains all the standard original interior with a modified Speedo, which is a stack cluster. Apart from that, body-wise, it's all sort of standard MR2. So the bonnet release is in a strange spot. And in the engine bay, there's a whole lot of custom work to make this all work. Basically, it uses a Hyper 9 uh, 144 volt dual shaft motor. With the control and everything to make it work. It's running Cal B batteries, and I'm around 144 volts. Um, and there's in four different battery boxes. There's one hidden down here, there's one here. For anyone familiar with the MR2, there's a fuel tank through the middle. There's a big long one through there with about 21 batteries. Uh, fuses and everything are all tucked up out of the way. Retains a factory gearbox with no clutch. Um, keeps it simple to convert. No clutch works pretty well. But the engine stops when you change gears, but um, I like to maybe put a clutch in it later just to speed up things for racing and whatnot. Still retains all the factory boot and Everything works as normal. Keep the charging cable in there. There's plenty of room for shopping, bags, whatever you sort of need. It's, it's only a two-seater car at the end of the day. How hard is it in terms of if someone's sitting at home going, oh, I want to do an electric conversion? It's difficult, not difficult. Um, issues with like things you need to worry about in terms of actually getting on the road. Obviously, you've got a mod plate for the car yeah. um, and whatnot. Well, in terms of building it, there's lots of information out there, but there's also not at the same time. Some cars you can buy kits for and put it all just together and uh, wire it up yourself. Um, to engineer it, it's sort of easy because you don't need emissions testing and all that sort of stuff. This still retains factory brakes as, as it has regen, the brakes are better than they were before anyway. Uh, and it's not making silly amounts of power, it's only sort of 100 kilowatts or 300 newton meters, yeah. which is still miles better than the original 4AGE. Um, but yeah, it's not too silly. If you're doing twice the power, like a Tesla power drive or something like that, yeah, you'd need a bit more engineering. Yeah. But in terms of a Hyper 9 conversion or somewhere similar, quite simple, quite easy. They, they're quite a compact engine, they fit nicely. So, yeah. yeah. If you try to engineer a car, there's always little fiddly yeah. stuff that needs to be done. But it was nothing, there was nothing major difficulty about it. It was easier doing a petrol conversion with more power because you've had to do emission tests, a lot of brake tests, and all that sort of stuff. Whereas this past every brake test, everything straight away, no worries. So, I mean, this thing's not very clutch, it's sort of just. Don't press the clutch and just put it in second gear. It'll take off at any gear, really. Yeah. But you just use second around. Yeah. Sort of under 60 k's an hour. Depends if you be bothered changing gears, but yeah. Sort of just chuck it in and take off as normal, and you come to a complete stop. In second, no worries. It'll stop. Accelerate again, and it just works as as an automatic sort of thing. It's you know it's quite simple. Um, you just use the gears for a bit more range on what you want the motor to do. Yeah. So yeah, I've gone to a stack cluster, which is my probably favourite thing in the car. Yeah, as your brake will go green and go into regen. You can accelerate it again and I'll show you what amps you're pulling out of it. But then all the gauge work shows everything it needs to show. Uh, all the high beams, everything comes on there. And brake light, that's all you sort of really need as a bare minimum. Because yeah. there was a heap of factory gauges that weren't needed. It works, which goes around a second now, and it works pretty nicely. And yeah. get a bit of throttle, it's got a reasonable amount of torque. Yeah, it's pretty well. Yeah, it's actually quicker than the 4AG, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's um, 4AG makes 88 kilowatts, and these are around 70 of the tyres. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember the torque figure, I think it's around 200 newton meters. So this makes over 300 and 100 kilowatts, so yeah. a little bit, little bit nicer. Yeah. It's not over and down to power, but it shuffles along really nicely. It's sort of the way it delivers power because it's, it's everywhere. It's not just a really narrow power band. You can just cruise along, give it full throttle, and it goes. Yeah. Um, that's enough to sort of get you in the back of the seat. Yeah. yeah. It's not. Wouldn't say it's overly fast, but I would say it's slow either. No, it's definitely not slow. To yeah, like, and it gets yeah. up to the speed limit. No worries. Yeah. Very very easily. So. It's all just about using the gears a little bit more to get a little bit more acceleration if you need, but... Yeah. The main thing is it's quick in traffic due to the fact um, it just goes. It doesn't need any um, 
doesn't need the right RPM, it doesn't need anything, it's instant torque, instant power. Yeah. And it's a very smooth power band, so it doesn't really matter. Rough cost of full conversion? A lot. It's a lot cheaper if <laughs> the car's done, but I brought this with, there's no rear window in it, there was no interior. Um, I had a shed full of MR2 parts, so I sort of built it together. My mate's got a heap, so I borrowed parts off him, brought parts off him. In terms of electric conversions, 20 to 30 grand, depending on what you use and how you do it and all that sort of stuff. Um, but roughly around there. Yeah. And what sort of range are you sort of looking at in usage? At bare minimum, it's about 130 k's. Yeah. Um, in 30 degree weather, when it's actually hot and the batteries work better, it's about 170, 180 k's. Yeah. So, which is out of 25 kilowatt hours, so it's not too bad. It's pretty efficient, it's on par with Tesla's, which is nice. Yeah, and charge time? Uh, nine to 10 hours, I think, overnight. Yeah. But usually I drive it, put it on charge overnight, and it's ready to go the next day, so it's not really, yeah. hasn't been a problem. I don't use it long distances, I've got other cars for that. It's just a bit of a run around town, bit of fun, so. Yeah. What do you reckon you get, like, per 100 k's, just as a comparison to, like, cross petrol? 50 bucks, I think, to do 1,000 k's. Right. On the Celica, so yeah, it's about the same, charging it at home. Yeah. Um, this doesn't have any supercharged set up on it. You can do it, there's no reason you can't. Just haven't needed to, it's not the scope for the car. It's just, I'm only going to do 150 k's in it really anyway, that's what it's designed for. It's, yeah. it's not exactly like a long distance cruiser. There's not, I can't fit camping gear and it's never going to go away camping. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah. I like cars to handle properly, so I didn't want it to be an electric car that wasn't fun. It's still, I reckon it's just as fun, if not better than the original 4AD to drive. It's got so much grip. The weight balance is, it's, weighs 10 80 so it's not really any heavier than a factory car um, the weight's a little bit better in the nose it's a bit more even so it yeah. handles a lot nicer yeah. um, i haven't hooked up the aircon yet but i've got all the aircon there to install and everything so once i finish all that off and it's basically it should do everything that it did before yeah. if not better sort of thing is yeah. the sort of aim for the car yeah. being that it's set up to actually handle properly you can just drive it as hard as you want three corners and it just handles like an electric go car yeah which is good fun because you're coming to a roundabout like this and just trying to put that in the window. <laughs> it's pretty balanced, isn't it? When you actually get on the edge of grip, it's really fun to drive. Yeah. And how's the weight distribution with the packs in it now and everything, like front and rear, compared to what it was like with the 4 g It's a little bit front heavier. Yeah. Um, so it's a little bit more even. It's still around, um, I think these are originally 60 40 or something. Yeah. So you pull up on this decent gradient on the brake. <laughs> yeah. Just get on the throttle and it'll just take off, no dramas. Yeah. Which isn't quite nice, so that's just in second gear and it just pulls straight up the hill. Yeah. And any further plans for it in the future or just enjoy it? Yeah, enjoy it. I don't know if I'll keep it or not, I've got plenty of other things. It's been fun building it, but yeah. wouldn't mind putting a clutch in it so I can do some motor carters and sort of try a few different things with it. Yeah. Um, might take it to Winton just to see how it goes. Um, yeah, apart from that, no real plans, it just it works really well. We've put it together, because Dad and I built the car, we put it together and there's been no dramas whatsoever with it, it's just worked. Um, yeah, I've had nothing go wrong with it, so it's been quite nice, yeah. quite, quite easy, which is rare on an engine swap usually. Yeah. You're chasing your tail on days on end. The wiring, still got a factory loom in it, it's just patched in where it needs to be and it all runs separate. Yeah. And it's got an e throttle and everything like that, so there's no no cables running backwards and forwards, there's no heater lines running backwards and forwards like these originally had. Yeah. So we pulled we pulled a lot of weight out of it just pulling out stuff that wasn't needed anymore. And like end of the day this car was sitting in a paddock so yeah, anyone that says you ruined the car it's sitting in the paddock rusting away so yeah. Yeah, it's back on the road now and all works so yeah. see it yeah. as a real win. Yeah.